Hi there. In this video, we are going to have a look at the Go Reports demo app here in Dropsource. Let's first see the app running in the simulator. So it's an app for managing reports. In this case, we are working with reports on how a retailer is packaging and presenting a product by stock. And the app could be used by people working for the product manufacturer. They would use it to check up on how things are going in the stores. So we can view the available stores. We can also search them. And we can filter them. When we select a store, we can see its details. We can check its location on a map. And if we were running on a physical device, we could get directions there from our current location. We can view past reports for each store and select one to view the detail on it. Each one has a range of data fields and a picture. And we can create new reports while we are out and about in the stores. We enter the relevant details, we can take a picture using the camera or we can load one from the gallery. And again, if we were on a device, we would submit our new report. You can see this app running on a device in another video, but we're just checking it out here to see how it fits together inside Dropsource. Now, all of the data in the app is stored in a back end, and we connect to it from the app using API requests. So let's take a look at this project in the Dropsource editor. We have versions of the app for both iOS and Android. This is the iOS one. You'll see in the center, the canvas for each page in the app. We can add elements to the pages from the elements selection here on the left. We have lots of standard components in there and we can add to those if there's something you need that we don't have by default. And you might notice that some of the elements we saw when we ran the app are initially hidden in here, like this table. We only show it when we have data from the API to display. So we show and hide it as the app runs. We can use the properties section here to toggle that visibility. We can also do it dynamically when the app is running. And we do that using actions. So this functionality here, we run when the data is received from the API. We're able to make API requests by uploading into DropSource a Swagger or Open API specification. This is a file that describes the API and outlines the details of each endpoint within it. And DropSource uses that to build requests from the app to the API, so you can connect to your own data and services. We can also make authenticated requests using data from the app. In this case, we're using a key. We can alternatively have user login in the app. So we can add requests to the API from each page. We can build user submitted data into the requests as parameters. And we can bind the responses we receive to the UI elements that you see in the page. Now, whenever we add any functionality to our app, we use actions. We saw one earlier, but let's check out what happens when the user enters something into this text field and hits return. We use the event that fires when that happens. And in here, we hide and show a few things and then we run the API request. This app responds to a variety of events. We just saw a user interaction event on the text field, and earlier we saw that we can respond to API data being received. We can also detect lifecycle events, such as pages loading, and app-wide events such as launch. So that lets us tailor the app's behavior to whatever happens when it runs. Now, in addition to the dynamic data that we get from the API, we can store and pass around local data values between the pages in the app. Device variables are what we use for global values. In this case, we're storing the API key value in there. And for data values that we only need to access within a page, we use page variables. In this case, we're using a page variable to represent a particular store. And that's the store that the user selected on the previous page. So we pass that from one page to the other. Anytime we make a change to the app, we hit the test button to create a new build of it. And we can run that either on the simulator, which we saw already, or we can build for a mobile device. Now, in that case, we can download the app directly onto a phone and test it there. So that lets us try out functionalities that require physical hardware, like location and the camera in the case of this app. 
And for enterprise projects, we can also develop multiple versions of an app that can be useful for new releases. For more example apps, check out our Help Center tutorials. You can also try out fully editable example apps like this inside the editor. You'll see those whenever you create a new project in DropSource. And the showcase on our website also highlights some of the successful apps built in DropSource. For any other information about what you can do in DropSource or for help implementing your ideas, get in touch and we'll be happy to help.